a variety of different mediums, whether that be a performance or a video, or in this case, a kind of immersive installation that incorporates video, sculpture, and performance that happens within. So I, I normally would do a performance that would be kind of working with um, the objects in the room. Um, but yeah, so this, I'm going to specifically talk about mermaids and Ursula. Um, and the kind of the lead up to how I got to this point. Um, I'm going to share with you some uh, video clips and some sound clips so you can kind of see what I've been thinking about in relation to mermaids. And I suppose, again, going back to mythology, um, that's something that I've been working with a lot. Um, so my previous project was on witches, and that was a two-year project which... I was looking at the burning times and um, thinking about the repercussions on like the construction of gender roles today. Um, and so in a way, the kind of movement from witches to mermaids seemed quite like a natural organic movement. Um, and I suppose the first, so like I've just been kind of collecting a variety of, of different uh, mermaid-based images. Um, so they've been a feature of popular culture for centuries, um, and they blur the boundary between women and fish, femininity and carnality, land and sea, human and the other. And that's something that I'm also thinking about in terms of, which is really great because it was a, an overlay with Margot's research. I was also looking at Rosie Bredotti's work um, and thinking of the post-human in relation to feminism. So this idea of this half-human, half-fish that that kind of fits neither here nor there, yet at the same time is this kind of, uh, like, you know, sexualized fig figure for the heterosexual kind of imagination. Um, yeah, so also another aspect of the research was uh, this project called The Little Voting, and that was basically based around um, research around this very specific myth that um, came from Hong Kong, which is where I grew up. And this, uh, this myth was kind of co-opted by certain artists within the art world and then used as a way to kind of talk about different kind of political or sociological societal issues that were happening in the time. So the first exhibition that they did was in 1997, which was the handover. So it kind of talks about this idea of like post-colonialism and I don't know, I like, I like the framework or the idea of using this myth as, as a way to kind of construct other narratives. Um, and so I'll just show you a couple of the... So I've like been collecting some images. Um, uh, this, these are all from the exhibition in 1997 by Oscar Ho that I was looking at. And these are all kind of <laughs> versions of the mermaid. And what I found really fascinating was that often they were depicted with a fish head as opposed to what you would typically see um, as, you know, the mermaid with the human body and then the, the fish tail. So I thought that was pretty, um, that was pretty cool. And um, yeah, and then so this project ended up being the, um, ended up being my degree show at uh, the Royal College of Art in July. And as you can see, these sculptures are also in the image. And so I was working with um, these themes, and I made a video piece called The Little Loting, and then I, I um, made a performance in collaboration with my sister. Um, and so in a way, like, that research and those objects kind of continued, like I like to continue working with the, the same images and the same um, objects and then kind of shifting the focus. Um, oh, I forgot, it's overlapping, that's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, so these are images from, these are documentation of the performance. Um, and then after that, um, in October last year, I continued with the research and kind of shifted towards 
um, a project that was more focused on Rosie Bray Dotti's research titled Terras. And I'm going to play you a really short clip of the video. Brought the mermaid in her interspecies morphology as terrace. A word from Greek that encompasses both mon and monster, prodigy and demon, sacred. An abundance of flesh, the lure of lust so strong, gives way to a ruthless appetite for blood. Um, 
Yeah, so then that brings me to uh, the Disney. Well, first of all, Hans Christian Andersen's version of The Little Mermaid. So thinking about that in relation to um, the Disney version. So in Hans Christian Andersen's ver version, he, the, the aim is for the soul. So The Little Mermaid um, wants to become human so she can have a soul and then reach heaven. And that, that kind of aim um, changes quite drastically to the Disney version. And the Disney version, it's about kind of conforming to like really specific heteronormative ideas of the prince and the white wedding. And what I was really interested in in The Little Mermaid is this kind of dichotomy between Ariel and Ursula and how this kind of this idea of the monstrous feminine and um, the kind of virginal childlike Ariel. Um, and I kind of have been looking at Ursula as this kind of um, this kind of feminist uh, hero or anti-hero. Um, and so I'm going to just show you. So I suppose what's really interesting in this is that Ariel gives up her voice and I suppose her agency and she becomes mute. Um, and there's this kind of trope that continues within other mermaid films of this kind of like mute childlike figure that can then be um, molded or like carved into um, you know a, a desirable kind of non non threatening woman um, and that's something that's also incredibly visible in um, Ah, yeah, and then so just a quick another another aerial and um, Ursula shot. So this is something that I also found really interesting. It's like the final the final scene where Ursula gets the the trident, gets the power, grows to this enormous kind of um, abundant place taking kind of figure of power, but then tips over into this kind of over emotional um, wreck. And I suppose this this kind of confirmation of like power not being not being held comfortably in like female hands and the fact that she kind of holds the trident which you know represents the phallus and in the end Eric the prince kind of punctures her so we can actually watch that so <coughs> in the stories that, that it is about this idea of kind of capturing and owning and um, and I suppose this kind of uh, hinting towards but yet at the same time it this kind of slipperiness between the kind of non-human and the human 
Um, and so I think in the in the Little Mermaid, it's this idea of her wanting her, wanting to have legs, and at the same time wanting a vagina to complete this kind of like ultimate cycle of the white wedding and the prince, and you know consummation of the marriage and children and this kind of you know saga that is never ending. Um, and so I, I feel like with Ursula, she kind of stands for this, um, this other kind of way of life. Um, and the fact that her, the design of Ursula was based on Divine, the drag queen, um, who is in um, all of uh, John Waters' films, specifically one, the one Filth. Um, and uh, as, a, as a figure that is kind of like, you know, incredibly voluptuous, takes up a lot of space, is overtly feminine and at the same time incredibly sexual in the way that she speaks, but inherently evil, right? Um, so that's something that, um, you know, I've been really interested in, in terms of um, this dichotomy between the mermaid and Ursula. And so I felt that these questions really manifested in this film called The Lure, which is a Polish film that was made in 2015. Um, and this scene is so incredibly epic. Tak rozumiem po polsku. ultimate of objectification and this kind of this need I suppose in one of the performances I talk about this kind of the question of the mermaid vagina is about penetration <laughs> and it's about penetration like metaphorically by the patriarchy and this need to kind of control the wildness or the kind of uh, uncontrolledness of um, uh, of women 
Um, and this film, as I, I feel, is, you know, does it in a way that is so, um, you know, like in your face, like this kind of, you know, older man really taking hold of her legs and opening her legs and it being, you know, nothing there. And like that is in, innately incredibly violent act um, and quite, you know, repulsive and like quite terrifying. Um, so yeah, I suppose this this idea of um, the mermaid vagina is something that I've been thinking about a lot and, and how, you know, the representation of Ariel or the Little Mermaid wanting legs is this idea of wanting to fulfill or wanting to conform to a certain expectation. Um, and yeah, so then in the meantime, I'll show you a bit of my art stuff as well, and then you can go back to the mermaid stuff. Um, so this is in soul shots of um, that performance in, um, with the video work and the sculptures. Yeah, so this idea of Ursula's tentacles and then here we are, it's kind of hilarious doubling up with like being in here and photos of here. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I've been thinking a lot about let's, also this idea of, hold on, where is it gone? Yeah, so Ariel being a kind of a queer figure for empowerment, and how there's like endless articles online about how um, Ariel was seen as this, as this kind of like, as this root, um, in that you know she was wanting to be a human, and she had her gadgets and gizmos of like human, um, human um, artifacts. Um, that a lot of um, people within the trans community have recognised that as something that um, that uh, people um, who are kind of hoping for another life, or hoping for living in another body, or hoping for another way of being that is represented with Ariel, which I find, like, considering how incredibly, like, uh, misogynistic Ariel's Little Mermaid is, it's amazing that there is still this aspect that can be quite hopeful. And um, trans activist and um, feminist Monroe wrote off a short film, I think, a couple of months ago, um, and I'll just show you that really quickly. The pussy and the pescada, the pescada and the pussy. The pussy, the pussy and, and the pescada, the pescada and the pussy. The pussy and the pescada, the pescada and the pussy. The pussy and the pescada, the pussy and the pussy. The pussy and the pescada, the pescada and the pussy. 